Now I'm just going to use the round over bit of my router just to take off as much wood as we can with it to save hours of uh, filing by hand. And I've got this jig set up so I can run the router along these two surfaces and take as much wood as possible. So I've cut the first facet on either side joining up the two lines and it's amazing how close that actually is to the final shape. That would actually be a playable neck if a touch chunky. So the next thing to do is do the secondary facets. So you do the same distance again from there to there and then join those two lines and the same there to there and join those two lines. And then here you do, I'm not quite sure what you do there, I think you just kind of generally blend it in a bit up to the bottom of the fretboard. So, yeah, some more filing, but it's looking good. So I've marked out the lines in tape on either side, and I'm now going to join the center line to, to those two. Oh, we're out of battery. So now I've done the secondary facets there, between the center line and the midpoint of the neck. And that's a very nice feeling neck from top to bottom, really. So the last thing to do to finish shaping the neck before final sanding is to take the final facet off, which is just here, and just round that off so you don't have an edge just before the fretboard. But yeah, very happy with that. That's worked very nicely. After a lot of sanding, I've now got the neck to this, and I'm very happy with that. That's worked very nicely, with a nice, even, smooth shape. I've sanded it to 180 grit, and I'll sand it to 320, and uh, yeah, that's going to be very nice indeed. Now I need to try and sort out what the hell I'm doing in this transition, because I'm not entirely sure. I have to do some kind of ramp, but yeah, I didn't really think that through. Oh well, all part of the fun. So I hacksawed this bit off the heel, and then I've spent a long time sanding it all in and getting it smooth. Now I'm not entirely sure when we do about upper fret access because the body comes here and goes around for the lower horn. So in order to get to those upper frets I'm going to have to do something about that but that's for a later day really. But that's looking very good, it's a nice smooth transition. And I think the next thing, well, apart from doing this up to 320 grit, is uh, fretting it, I think. Looking good. Now that I've got the fretboard on, I'm a little bit concerned about the string break angle. So this is the template I've used. So the fretboard sits on there and this is the headstock. And there's not a huge drop there especially for the strings that are further away, the break angle over the nut isn't that high. And so when we're looking at this, even with the nut on, by the time the tuner posts are in, there's really not much of a break angle over the nut. So I've decided I'm going to route the headstock down a bit further. Um, I'm going to leave the purple heart driver where it is and I'm just going to route uh, along there, along there, take maybe 5 mil off. And that will give me a much better break angle over the strings, over the nut. And I've still got enough thickness to get the correct thickness of the headstock, even at a lower uh, depth. And I'll show you the rig I've set up for that next. So this is the jig I've got set up to route the headstock down. So I've got various thicknesses of MDF and maple offcuts from the body for the router to run along. 
and then I'm using this as a guide. I'm going to set this up parallel to this edge at 74 mil, as that's the thickness between the edge of the router and the edge of the cutter. And that will allow me to do that. Then I'm going to flip it around to the other side, and then I can freehand the rest of it. And that should give me a much better string break angle. And there we have it. That's worked very nicely. Now, yeah, I think that step from there to there would be too much on its own. But with the added reinforcement of the, the V of the Purple Heart and the mahogany, that will be plenty strong enough. So that should give me a much better break angle over the nut. And it makes the V of the Purple Heart stand out even more, so that's a nice feature. The next thing to do is to take the headstock down to the correct thickness. So I've set up this rather elaborate set of uh, MDF, maple and melamine. So I've got something either side for the router to run on. I've got an end stop set up there, so I'm only going to route to this line as that's going to form the volute. And so now I'm just going to buzz this off. And there we have it. That's the headstock thickness and the world's chunkiest volute. Still don't quite decide what to do with that. But I'm going to keep that for the time being because that's then the same height as the rest of the body. So I can still lay it flat whilst we're doing the rest. But yeah, that's worked very nicely. Definitely a unique headstock. Looking good. I've put the tuners in now. And that's worked nicely. Now, as I'm trying to keep the costs of this down. Nobody sells 4x2 tuners secondhand on eBay. But one guy was selling a set of 3x3 three three with one random black extra tuner in. So I snapped that up. And, uh, yeah. Strings and um, tuners are on. Um, now to fret it. I've now finalised the shape of the headstock. So I've got this volute here, which is still a chunky volute. But yeah, it looks good. So now I'm going to uh, put the fret markers in. Now I'm trying not to use plastic on this, because everything else is going to be metal and wood, apart from the pickups. So I've got this 7mm ebony dowel. And I'm going to cut this into 2mm discs and then inlay that into the fretboard. Now I couldn't find any non-plastic side dots because they're 2 or 3 mil and it's impossible to find wood that thin, at least that's black. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill a 3 mil hole in the maple and when I saw the ebony into the dots I'm going to collect the dust and then fill the holes with the dust and then just drip a very thin super glue into there, pack it all in down, and that'll give me nice looking dots without using plastic. So now I'm drilling the uh, holes for the inlays. So I've cut the ebony dowels into these little discs, and I'm using a 7mm brad point drill just to drill the holes, and they're going to slot in very nicely, and then we'll glue them in. And now I've got the fret markers in. So I glued them in. I then cut a hole the size of the markers in a sheet of cardboard, or a thin cardboard. Put it over the hole and filed it down as close as I could. And then I did the rest with a chisel to get them flat. And now I'll polish them with some high grain, high grit sandpaper to finish the job. So, on to fretting. I'm using Evo Gold frets, which are a copper alloy, which are harder than the standard frets, but not as hard as stainless steel. They're nice in between, and uh, because they're harder than the strings, they never wear. Therefore, you never have to uh, refret it. So I've cut all of those to size and got them marked in my little container. Always handy to keep off cuts. 
there's various ways to put frets in. You can just line them up and hit them with a hammer, but that's not necessary the best way to do it. You can get a proper fret press, but they're 300 quid. Or you can buy an F clamp with a fret press core mounted into it, but again, that, they're about 40 quid. So I made my own. So I bought uh, a fret press core. It's got a little groove in there for the frets for a fiver. And I've mounted it in this block. I've then cut a hole in there, which is just the diameter of the round head on the clamp here that fits in there. And then I can use that to press the frets in. And I've also made a, uh, a neck rest out of a bit of scrap 2x2. Two two. So you mount the neck in there and then use the press to press the frets in and that should give a nice even pressure and get them all seated very nicely. So on with the fretting. And there we have it, all fretted. They all seem to be seated nicely. So yeah, very happy with that. I've ordered some flush cut trimmers to cut the ends off before we then file them to the desired angle. But yeah, it's looking good. So now I'm going to locate the bridge. So I've got the top and low E tunes on, I've got some black thread uh, put on the guitar and through this bridge and then I've got it lined up evenly on either end and I can then mark the holes and uh, drill them to get them on there. So I've now drilled the holes for the bridge and the ferrules on the other side. So that's the centre section finished, apart from trimming the frets. And now we're looking at the pots and the controls. So I'm going to do a two volume, two tone, with a three way selector switch and an output jack there. And I uh, spent quite some time working out where I wanted to go, but I'm happy with it there. So I'm going to drill those through and then route a cavity from the other side. So I've worked out where I want my controls to go. And I've drilled pilot holes through to the back. And then I've uh, worked out where the cavity wants to go. And I'm going to cut out straight pieces of MDF and make a template for this so I can then run the router around it. Now because this is a slightly thin guitar the average strut is 44 mil thick. This is only 35 mil thick. Uh, because I've got these push-pull pots, which are quite chunky, it's going to be a tight fit, but it's just going to clear it. And then I've got a bit of maple veneer here, which I've glued together and sanded down. I'm going to make a back plate out of that, and that will nicely match the grain and avoid the use of plastic. So I've got a force and a bit here which I'm going to use to hog out most of the wood before I use the router to route it down to the thickness I want. It's going well. <laughs> <laughs> 